Hi, this is Maru, and today we have another video about radical expressions. Today we will discuss rational exponents, and we will use exponents to change radical form into exponential form. So we have like a radical form like that, we'll be able to change it into exponential form by the end of the video, and if I have an exponential form, I'll be able to change it into radical form. Also, we can use the exponential form to perform operations of radicals in an easier way than using the radicals themselves or in cases we can't use the radicals so let's see what we have now for the first group of examples here before we go through the examples let's go through the rule the rule here says if the nth root of a is a real number of course we work only with real numbers when it comes to uh, radicals and exponents m is an integer so i have multiple conditions here a is a real number m is an integer and m over n is in the lowest term m over n in the lowest term means it's a fraction in simplest form then a to the power of 1 over n is equal to the nth root of a what does that mean it means simply that if i have x to the power of half this is equal to square root of x if I have x to the power of 1 over 3, this is equal to the cubic root of x. So this is what they mean by a to the power of 1 over n is equal to the nth root of a. The second part says, and a to the power m over n is equal to the nth root of a to the power of m. What does that mean? It means if I have x, let's say, to the power of 2 over 3, this is going to be the denominator here represents the index, like in the last two, which is the cubic root of x. And the numerator is actually the exponent of x, so it's going to be x squared, or equal to the nth root of a, all to the power of m. So again, I can write the same thing, cubic root of x, then write that the whole thing here is squared. So when I have a power, the fraction, like that, the denominator represents the index. The numerator represents the exponent. This exponent could be under the radical, or we put parentheses and put it outside the radical. Both cases are the same. Now, if m is negative, like this here too is negative, then a does not equal 0. Why? Because we know if it's negative, it's going to be in the denominator, and if it's in the denominator and a is equal to 0, the whole thing will be undefined. We will see what we mean by that as we solve the examples we have. So again, we understand that when I have any value and it has an exponent that's represented by a fraction, a rational exponent as we call it, it's represented by a fraction, the denominator is the index and the numerator is the power. Here it's one, so we don't write it. Numerator, denominator again is the index and numerator is the power or exponent. Here it's two, so we write two. So let's solve some of the examples we have. It says here write each expression in radical form. So I have x to the power of 1 over 6. So I understand that this is the sixth root of x. Why the sixth root? Because the denominator is 6. If we have x to the power of 2 over 7, so this is equal to the seventh root of x squared or seventh root of x and put that in parentheses and the square outside the parentheses both will give you the same value if I have numbers. t to the power of negative 3 over 4. Well, now I have an issue. It's negative, and we know when we have a negative exponent, it's actually not in simplest form. I have to move it to the denominator to be t to the power of 3 over 7. So if I change it now into radical form, it's going to be the seventh root again of t cubed or I can write it as 1 over the 7th root of t all cubed. Both cases are the same answer. Now if I have a radical and I want to change it into exponential form, write each expression in exponential form. So I'll change it from radical to exponential. I have the square root of 7 x cubed. Take care that only the x is cubed and 7 is not cubed. So this is basically 7 to the power of half, because only 7 is under the radical, and x to the power of 3 over 2. 
because it's under the radical and also cubed. Well, in this case, I have the square root of 7x all cubed, so both of them are cubed. So this is actually equal to 7 to the power of 3 over 2 and also x to the power of 3 over 2. So this is quite a different case. Now, let's look at the last one here. I have 5xy all of it to the power of 6 under the cube root. So I can say that I have 5xy, all of them, are to the power of 6 over 3, which makes them all 5xy to the power of, when we try to simplify, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So the answer will be 25 because you're going to distribute the power. So 5 is squared, x is squared, and also y is squared. 5 squared is 25, and x is squared, y is squared, and this is your answer. Now let's look at our next group of questions. We can use the exponential form to help us solve questions that we can't solve in radical form. What do we mean by that? Now, I have the 7th root of 7 multiplied by the cubic root of 7. According to the rules of multiplying radicals, because they don't have the same index, I can't multiply. But if I change them into exponential form, this is going to be 7 to the power of 1 over 7, multiplied by 7 to the power of 1 over 3. Using the rules of exponent, because I have the same base, I can actually just add the exponents. So, to add the exponents, you're going to change those into having the same denominator, and the same denominator here will be 21 in both cases, and this is going to be 3 and 7, so your answer is going to be 7 to the power of 10 over 21. Change this back into the radical form, so you're going to have the 21st root of 7 to the power of 10. Now again, exponents can help us to solve questions that cannot be solved in radical form. Let's look at the one we have here. Now, we have the ninth root of y cubed divided by the cubic root of y to the power of 9. Now, division with, if I have the same base, I am going to subtract exponents. Or, if I can write that as a negative exponent, I'm going to treat it as multiplication. So, I will have y to the power of 3 over 9 times y to the power of and change this root into a negative root because it was in the denominator so negative 9 over 3 it's the same thing as dividing so you'll get y to the power of 1 over 3 times y to the power of negative 3 which is y to the power of 1 over 3 minus 3 equals y to the power of negative 8 over 3 now you will find that you have a negative exponent again so if i want to write it in radical form it's going to be 1 over the cubic root of y to the power of 8 because the whole thing here will go into the denominator as a positive exponent. Now we know this is not the simplest form. I'm going to simplify. How? Now this is the cubic root of y to the power of 8. 8 is more than 3 so I can break it actually to y to the power of 6 times y to the power of 2. Why am I breaking it? Because y to the power of 6 can be taken out. You can go back to um, simplifying exponent, sorry, radicals, the video of simplifying radicals to see why are we doing this. Now, when we do this, I'm going to have 1 over y squared cubic root of y squared, y y squared, because 6 divided by 3 is 2. Now, I need to rationalize because, as we agreed before, we cannot have a radical in the denominator. So how do I rationalize? I'm going to multiply by the value that makes this cubed, so I can take it out of the radical. So I'm going to multiply by the cubic root of y, because y times y squared is y cubed. If I multiply the denominator by a value, I'm going to multiply the numerator as well. When I do that, in the numerator, you're going to have the cubic root of y. In the denominator, you're going to have y squared multiplied by the cubic root, because they're the same index, I'm going to multiply y cubed, which is y. So this is going to be the cubic root of y over, this will give me y, y times y squared is y cubed. And this is the final answer for this question. Now let's look at our next question. I have the fourth root of 18 multiplied by the 
square root of 12. Now in this case we have a problem. The problem is that we do not have the same base, so changing them into exponential form might not help me. However, if I am able to find the prime factors of this, they might be the same and I could be able to actually simplify further. How am I going to do that? Now, the fourth root of 18, if I want to find the prime factors of 18, well, 18 is 9 times 2, 2 is prime, and 9 is 3 times 3. So I know here that this is 2 times 3 squared, and that is multiplied by 12, 12, 12 is much easier, 4 times 3, and 4 is 2 times 2, so the prime factors here is 2 squared times 3. Now, I can actually simplify here. So let's simplify first before we change into exponential form. So here I'm still going to have the fourth root of 2 times 3 squared, and that is multiplied by 2 squared. Can get out, so 2 times the square root of 3. Now change everything into exponential form. So I'm going to have 2 to the power of 1 over 4, multiplied by 3 to the power of 2 over 4, which is actually half, multiplied by 2, and 2 here is to the power of 1, so we know. And that's multiplied by 3 to the power of half. Now, whatever it's to the power of 1 or half a whole number or an integer as an exponent, don't do anything with it. This is the simplest form. So I'm going to leave the 2 out here. Then I'm going to have 2 to the power of 1 over 4. So this stays. Nothing happens to it. The three, This 3 actually is to the power of half. 2 over 4 is half. And this 3 also is to the power of half, so I'm going to add the powers. You will end up with 2 times 3 to the power of half plus half is 1. 3 and 4th root of, so this is multiplied, 4th root of 2. So your final answer is going to be 6 4th root of 2. And this is the simplest form. So we found out, although we did not have the same base in the beginning and it wasn't really helpful to change it into exponential form in this case when we found the prime factors and change into exponential form we could actually perform the multiplication by adding exponents and get a simplest form now let's look at our last question here we have the square root of x to the power of 4y divided by the fourth root of x squared y to the power of 8. Now, I advise you, before you change into exponential form, try to simplify first. So, I have here x to the power of 4, and this is squared, so it can get out as x squared. And I will only have square root of y. And here, x squared cannot be, can, can get out of the fourth root, by it, but y to the power of 8 can. So, it will come out as y squared, fourth root of x squared. Now, let's write these in exponential form. So I have x squared multiplied by y to the power of half multiplied by y to the power of negative 2, because it's in the denominator, multiplied by y to the power of negative 2 over 4. Now, let's try to combine like terms, as we say. So I have, sorry, this is x to the power of negative 2 over 4. So I have x squared minus half, because 2 over 4 is half, times y to the power of half minus 2, which is x to the power of 3 over 2, times y to the power of negative 3 over 2. If I write this back in radical form, it's going to be the square root of x cube over the square root of y cube. Now, actually, if I want to simplify further, I can. The square root of x cubed is x, because I have x squared, square root of x, over y, square root of y. Now, this looks good. However, having a radical in the denominator is not acceptable, so I will only need to rationalize. How am I going to rationalize? Well, I need this to be square, so I'm going to multiply by the square root of y, both numerator and denominator. When we do that, we will get to x square root of xy, because both have the same index, I can multiply them together, and this is y, 
square root of y squared, which is also y, so your final answer is going to be x, radical xy divided by y squared. Now, I hope this has been helpful for you. First of all, we discussed how we change from radical form to exponential form and vice versa. And we have discussed how using the exponential form can actually help us solve questions that are not possible to be solved using the radical form. Thank you so much for watching.